Good day to all of you. Uh, we are back with ch uh, chapter number three of the basics module, that is the financial intermediaries. In the previous two chapters, we saw the need to invest, and uh, in the second chapter, we saw the financial regulators which are present in the market ecosystem. The financial regulator of India being the Security and Exchange Board of India. So, without much further delay, we start with this chapter. An interesting chapter, little bit lengthy than the previous two chapters, however, quite interesting than the previous two. Before we go on to the chapter proper, let us take the key takeaways of the previous chapter, that is the financial regulators chapter. In part one of that chapter, we saw what are financial markets where which are nothing but a place to transact in financial securities and they exist digitally and can be accessed through a broker. There are three types of financial entities which is which are the final market participants, the financial intermediaries and the financial regulators which along with the infrastructure create a market ecosystem. In the part two of the previous chapter we saw the financial market participants, the different categories of the participants and what is the aim of all of them that is to make money and the emotions in all those market participants in the form of greed and fear. In the part 3 of the previous chapter, we saw financial regulators. SEBI is a financial market regulator of India. It sets rules and ensures compliance. Different entities have different set of rules prescribed by SEBI and SEBI constantly conducts surveillance and intervenes if required. So now let us come to the financial intermediaries chapter proper that is chapter number chapter number three we'll take the i'll first introduce this chapter now what do you mean by the word intermediaries intermediate nothing but a intermediaries is nothing but a middleman why do you require inter, uh, intermediaries these are some of the questions which we'll be taking in this chapter Now, there are certain entities which work, work in the background. In the previous chapter, I told you there are three entities, participants, the regulators and intermediaries. So, intermediaries are one of the entities of the market ecosystem. A transaction is complete when a financial security and funds are credited and debited from and to or to the seller or the buyer. Now, to ensure completion of transactions, there are certain corporate entities which work in the background. Now, there are certain SEBI, uh, SEBI has certain rules for all these entities in, uh, including the intermediaries. Now, background entities have to comply with these SEBI rules. A smooth and safe market ecosystem is only created when all of the entities comply with the SEBI rules. If one of the, if any one of the entities defaults or breaks any of these rules, then a harmonious system is disrupted. Now let us, uh, what is the role of intermediaries proper? The background entities, certain background entities are called financial intermediaries. The multiple types of intermediaries who work independently and mutual, mutually with each other are present in the Indian market ecosystem. Now I have purposely written the word Amazon. What is the Amazon example? For uh, Just to give you a 30 seconds uh, overview of Amazon. Whenever you log into Amazon, you buy a certain product. Then it is uh, uh, the order book is generated and your order is confirmed. And in after five days, uh, your uh, uh, commodity is delivered to your doorstep. Either there is cash on delivery or you have pre prepaid the amount. Uh, for that uh, for buying for for that purchase now how do you think this whole ecosystem functions there are certain background entities in the amazon marketplace which works for example thus the uh, the uh, people who are maintaining the amazon website or the it uh, department of amazon then the payment interface system then the uh, order generation system then there are sellers who are selling it to you they are not intermediaries but generally then, then there is uh, then there is a delivery person who actually delivers it to your doorstep so there are certain intermediaries or entities which work in the background to have a uh, successful delivery in amazon similarly this kind of thing also happens in your 
uh, financial ecosystem also. So with this brief introduction, we come to the aim of today's lecture that is to understand financial intermediaries. For your ease of understanding, we have divided our lecture into the into four parts. In part one, we'll be taking financial intermediaries, a brief about financial intermediaries. In part two, banks and clearing corporations will be discussed, which are nothing but a kind of a financial intermediary. In part three, another kind of intermediary will be discussed, known as brokers, known as brokers. And in part four, we'll be discussing another financial intermediary, which is depository and depository participants. Now they have purposefully purposely been put in this logical sequence because these three market participants actually maintain three important accounts: the bank account, the trading account, and the DMAT account. Remember this sequence. We'll be discussing them it in the later part of the chapter. So let us come to part one. That is financial. intermediaries so of uh, as per definition a financial intermediary is nothing but an institution or an individual generally an institution that serves as a middleman among diverse market parties in order to facilitate financial transactions these parties can also be participants okay so they it acts as a middleman between uh, two parties to complete a transaction so that is what a financial intermediary in its classical definition means now there are three main intermediaries in the securities markets financial ecosystem okay so on the top i have named the three these are the banks the brokers and the depositories these are also the three parts of our lecture so what is the role of banks so banks has a straightforward role that is normal everyday function and it is the place where your bulk income comes and it is also the place which maintains your savings at bank bank account now brokers brokers is the link between you and the exchange and also the depository and what is a depository now depository is nothing but a place where your securities are held in digital format now there is one more intermediary known as depository participant which is different from depository which is required for you to interact with the depository now other than that not much in this slide now in the same sequence i have told you that you require three important accounts which are run by the three important financial intermediaries to actually transact in the security ecosystem so these are your bank account which are run by obviously banks now yes it is a place where a bulk income comes it is a reputation and banks have a straightforward role that is to help you transfer your funds from bank account to your trading account and vice versa now let us come to your trading account which is run by the broker now it is the place which temporarily holds your funds during transaction that's it it, it has no other role it temporarily holds your funds during transactions and it is kind of a gateway to the exchange now we come to the third account that is a dmat account which is now run by depository and is dln cdsl this is a place which holds your shares in digital format a uh, format a digital vault for your shares and other securities now all those three accounts are actually interlinked with each other with the same pan number and you can link multiple bank accounts to one trading account and one dmat account you can uh, have two three dmat accounts and you can uh, link uh, generally you can link only one dmat account to one trading account but there is now provision for linking multiple dmat account to trading account this statement of mine has to be corroborated however but for our practical purposes all these three bank accounts are interlinked and nowadays all your uh, all your transactions are directly exported to the tracers website of the indian government uh, income tax department so generally your taxation is also automated in this system this is done since 2020 onwards now now this is a place where we end part 1 if you have any questions you can answer uh, you can uh, sorry uh, ask these questions in the comment section or you can also ask me in the whatsapp group 
so guys let us now come to part 2 that is banks and clearing corporations now this is the first uh, as per the previous slide i told, showed you a diagram so on the left side the bank accounts are maintained uh, generally by banks so this is the uh, these are the first intermediary which will be taking that is the banks i'll be explaining to you what are clearing corporations i purposely put clearing corporation along with banks because clearing corporations also have a straightforward role they do not maintain any accounts per se Now what is the role of banks? Banks are nothing but lenders and borrowers. They have a straightforward role in the economy. In fact, an important role in the economy. Just call them Hindi may we also call them saukars. Okay, or money lenders or whatever. So banks are the modern money lenders and borrowers also, and they have an important role in the financial ecosystem of any country and also the financial ecosystem of securities markets. So they deal with individuals, organization, businesses, business. They provide loans. They also provide car loans and market base. Basically, they have, they take money from individuals. This is the this in this photograph. What is being shown is we put deposits in banks, and banks use the same deposits to uh, disburse loans to other people. And in between, it it gives you four or two percent on your deposits, and it charges six percent on. Loans. I'm just giving an example. These are just ballpark figures. So the difference is the profit of the bank. The bank give you an important financial service. Other than these, they also provide you a payment interface and intermediary services and also other financial services. Okay. There are two types of banking generally. One is the commercial banking that is for us retailers, and other one is the merchant banking which is for corporates. Merchant banking is generally an advisory role. Okay. So let us take banks proper now. By definition, bank is a financial organization which lends and borrows money. This is the classical definition of a bank. What is the role of the bank? To facilitate fund transfer from saving to trading account. Role of the bank in our financial ecosystem that is for buying and selling of shares. It has commercial and retail roles which I already told you. Not commercial retail actually. Merchant and commercial roles. The three basic roles of banks are in all the in all the format. That is, merchant and commercial. These are intermediation or advisory, payment systems, and financial services like advisory services and certain regulations also. Like the Reserve Bank of India is a is a regulatory uh, kind of a bank. It is a central bank of India and it also is a kind of a regulator of all other. Banks. So these are certain roles which banks have. So in financial ecosystem, banks have a straightforward role to maintain your savings bank account, which is linked to your trading account, and to facilitate fund transfer between fund transfer between savings account and your trading account, and vice versa also. Okay. Now, what is a clearing corporation? Uh, just to give you an example, when if you were if you have gone to any restaurant or anything. At the end of the day, generally, if you visit it at 10 o'clock in the night and move out well elevated, that is time when all the restaurants are closing. So at the end of the day, there is a person who is clearing all the transactions and counting all the money, etc., and checking whether whatever bills have been generated, that much cash has been generated or not. So that is known as clearing of the day. So this is the same thing which is done by a clearing corporation. Clearing corporation is an entity which does the final settlements of all the transactions in markets. Now, what is the role of clearing corporation to ensure smooth, efficient, and guaranteed settlement of transactions, and also to match buy and sell orders? It also ensures credit and debit of securities, that is your shares and funds. In between, if there are any disputes, it solves those disputes and prohibits default. If prohibit default means uh, if someone refuses to pay, it, it prohibits that. There are two main clearing corporation in India. However, there are seven in total, but there are two main clearing corporations for our purposes. These are. National Securities Clearing Corporation Limited, which is under NSC, and Indian Clearing Corporation Limited, which is under BSC or which is a subsidiary of BSC. The others are NCCL, IIFSC, MCCL, MCE, Double CL, NSC, IFSC. These full forms will be seen in the next slide. I have also put a hyperlink of the SEBI website. So the role of clearing corporation is simple. It is like a guarantee of guarantor. of all the transactions and ensure that all the transactions are honored 
So this is a screenshot of the SEBI website. I put a hyperlink uh, at the bottom, and you can see the number of clearing corporations which I have. Most uh, for our purposes, Indian Clearing Corporation Limited (ICCL) and NSCL, National Securities Clearing Corporation Limited. These are the two main clearing corporations which work for us. Now there is also something known as interoperability operability between these two. Now what is interoperability? Interoperability, yes. Pronounce it right. Now, what is interoperability? Generally, you don't. There is no effect on retailers of interoperability. There is no direct interaction with clearing corporations. Only broad awareness of role, processes, and regulations of these professional institutions is required. Now, interoperability was a mechanism wherein trades executed on exchange, that is either BSE or NSE or MSE, that is a commodity exchange. Multi Security Exchange of India can be settled or cleared by any of the clearing corporations. Okay, either NSEL or uh, ICCL, irrespective of whichever exchange they were done on. Means NSCS, NSCCL, if required, will be giving services to BSE also, and ICCL, which is under BSE, if required, will give services to NSE also. Now, what is the uh, why do I have uh, put a word known as if required? Because generally they will uh, stick to their own exchanges. However, there are times when one of the exchanges has a problem, so they the other exchange takes other clearing corporation takes over the over the role of the other uh, counter clearing corporations also. This has happened actually. Uh, this has uh, the first and foremost interoperability was done since 2019, and on 24th February 2021, this had actually come into practice. This was a day when National Stock Exchange had actually uh, shut down because of some. Technical reasons. You can search it this on the uh, on the internet. In fact, it can be one of your own time work tasks also. So with this, we come to the end of part two. So same drill, same procedure. If any questions, please ask in the comment section by tagging this part, or uh, please ask in the WhatsApp group also. Both the options are available. Now we come to part three. And we take the second uh, type of intermediary, intermediaries that is the brokers. Now, purposely I put this photograph. This is a photograph of the movie, uh, the protagonist of the movie, The Wolf of Wall Street, uh, in which Leonardo DiCaprio was the uh, the main lead. It was based on the life of Jordan Belfort, who is still alive, and he was one of the uh, flamboyant brokers in the 80s and 90s in the U.S. stock. Markets, not to, to be exact, 80s or 90s. I don't know the timeline exactly, but yeah. So he was one of uh, he had got a broking license. So just as a representation, if you want, you can do an own time work on this, and you can also watch this movie, The Wolf of the Wall Street, which is available on online uh, platforms also now. And on this right side, this is actually uh, I have tried to represent a broker's uh, terminal and the broker's. Uh, Office where the terminal is maintained, the trading terminal is, or the software trading, the software of the trading terminal is maintained. Now again, this is uh, I think you remember this photograph from the previous slide. So what is happening here? This is nothing but a BSC trading, and this is how actually 1990s brokers used to actually trade in the inside the trading ring. This photograph can also remind you of the Netflix series on. Harshad Mehta. I don't know the name exactly, but uh, the series on Harshad Mehta scam. So, this in the previous uh, pre-digital era, this is how securities used to take place when securities were in paper format. That is, they were in the format of share securities, where there used to be actual bidding in voice, voice bidding inside a trading ring, and these are nothing but representatives of brokers who who, who used to uh, do the bidding and uh, asking. It is the buying and selling, and brokers themselves were never, never present. Small time brokers must be present because they did not have that much capital to employ other people. However, big time brokers used to have their own representatives of their companies or broking firms inside trading ring to act on their behalf. So this is nothing but a BSC trade ring. Now, what has changed after this? We'll see in the what has changed after in the physical. Uh, way of broking or physical uh, transactions, we'll see. Now, so now let us take brokers proper. So, as per definition, a broker 
is a corporate entity which is registered as a trading member with the stock exchange and holds a stock broking license it also follows the sebi guidelines now what is the function of a broker it fac it facilitates transaction by maintaining trading account and providing trading terminals now what is a trading account a trading account is nothing but a gateway to the financial markets and it can be accessed through apps websites and calls the only way to interact with brokers the, this accessing trading account is the only way to uh, interact with brokers and exchanges you cannot go to their offices and buy and sell shares or you cannot go directly to the national stock exchange or bombay stock exchange to buy and sell shares this is an interface which you have to pers uh, purposefully go through compulsorily go through to actually transact in the stock markets and also transact with other intermediaries on the left side we have taken the top 10 stock brokers of india you must have seen these names on advertisements and you must have come across in their personal lives also sher sher khan motilal oswal zerodha these are the three top brokers zerodha is kind of a discount broker its competitor is now gro g r o w u and w and uh, icci direct ifl angel broking and hdfc securities sbi securities these are generally not discount brokers they are brokerages comparatively higher to the above three i personally have accounts in one account in share khan my wife's account and one account in zerodha our family has one account in zerodha and one account in share khan i do not know much about the other brokers now you can call them the top uh, 10 stock brokers of india but generally today zerodha is the largest market share of india's uh, trading accounts number of trading accounts zerodha generally opens a uh, uh, demat account in cds yes. <coughs> so now there are what are the types of uh, trading how do you actually interact with the stock broker or use your trading terminal there are three standard ways of trading which were followed earlier or now also the first was the old style physical trading okay this was a pre telephone era 1900s so you go to the stock broker's office meet an executive uh, executive of the broker and order your transactions and then take either your uh, the shares are delivered directly to your doorstep that is why the word delivery shares was introduced okay this was followed in india up till 1990s also or up to up to 1990 yes now the second uh, method came was nothing but telephone the same thing which you do in physical trading you do in telephone except that you don't have to go physically to the stock broker's office you do it on a phone call you make a phone call to the executive the same executive and order your transactions there is a kind of an authentication system which was there earlier password kind of a system the confirmation usually on the call itself and then in the end the delivery shares are delivered to your doorstep now the in the modern method this is the most popular way now after the advent in the post digital era the brokers provide you a trading terminal on your mobile application or web application you log into the trading terminal using your login id view your price live price quotes and transact yourself also you don't have to call your broker or even physically visit his office the trading terminal differs from broker to broker zerodha has a different uh, trading terminal motilal oswal has a different trading terminal sher khan has a different kind of a trading terminal however the basics of all these basic features are all same the trading terminals are provided on the website on your personal computer mobile uh, personal computer or personal computer applications mobile applications also now what are the services which are given by the broker access he gives you access to the security markets across the world and across india also you can even access there are certain brokers which provide you access to a new york stock exchange also or access to other markets also like robinhood he gives you leverage basically he gives you more than the amount you have in your account to transact we'll speak more about leverage or margins when we take the futures and options segments futures and options models he also provides you customer support self explanatory especially software issues he gives you a customer care number also and any transaction issues also multi purpose platforms he uh, he provides you a user friendly platform for multiple securities and exchanges you have it's a, you may have on the same uh, application you can transact in commodities you can transact in shares also you have different 
platforms for transacting in different segments. Contract notes he generally issues a contract note daily for the transactions of the day. He also gives you credentials that is for all the these services you, which you have to access through your software. You all need to have credentials, right? You may have an account in SBI, but if you don't have a login ID, password, or internet banking, you will not be able to access your SBI account online. So similarly, the broker gives you a back office login to access the summary of the accounts and etc. He gives you a login ID, password, and you need to change your password 15 or every 30 days, depending upon the broker broker's regulations. Now he also gives you services like transfer of assets, that is funds and securities between your trading demat and bank account. These are the three basic accounts which are required to transact in security markets. So guys, now how do you choose a broker? Okay, we know what are the services given by a broker. So how do you choose a broker? You will have a certain sort of your own requirements, right? You are a client and you have your own set of requirements. So let us see what can be those requirements on the basis of which you will be choosing a specific broker. You know broker broker charges a fees. In fact, we'll see broker charges a fees. We know what are the services it gives. Now let us see what as per your requirements, how do you choose that? So what can be your requirements? First, we'll go clockwise. Uh, quality of software, obviously, especially for me personally, this is one of the main requirements. I find Sher Khan and Zarudas. Uh, both of the uh, softwares were quite robust and uh, quite user friendly. So that is one of my main requirements. Then response of execution and speed of transaction, yes, this is one of my main requirements too. And balance between services and broker, uh, brokerages, generally brokerages doesn't matter for me because I generally choose, uh, I've generally chosen the uh, most cheapest uh, brokers that is Sherkan and Zerota. And the user friendliness, that is one of my main KRAs. So user friendliness and multi-purpose platforms for multiple securities and exchanges. A one shop, a one window stop where you can transact in all kinds of securities at one place. And proximity to office. Some some of you might guys uh, might want that uh, the your broker's office should be pro, should be near to your house or your working space. But nowadays, we, since uh, since digitization, this requirement particularly no longer is no longer applicable nowadays because most of the troubleshooting is done online only through customer care or through uh, digital contacts so yes this is how this is, these are generally your requirements of a broker the main thing is that there should be a balance between the services and the fees or the broker brokerage which that particular broker charges now what is the brokerage fees or in short brokerage let us see. The broker charges a fees for the services he provides. We, we saw what all services he gives. So that fees is called as brokerage charge or just brokerage in short. The brokerage rates vary as per broker obviously. No, no, no two brokers will give you the same uh, fee structure. So the balance between the fees versus the services is kind of a desirable requirement which a client should have so with this we come to the end of part three uh, if any questions again i repeat please uh, put it in the comment section or please contact or uh, please put your question in my whatsapp group so let us come to part four that is depositories and depository participant these are the last set of Depositories are the last set of intermediaries which will be taking and depository participants are an additional intermediaries which have a which have a separate role with respect to depositories and between depositories and yourself. They are kind of sub intermediaries. Not actual intermediaries but sub intermediaries you can say. Yeah. So now uh, let us see the, in this slide I will be taking you back certain years. On the left hand side, I have shared a photograph of a share certificate of Reliance Industries. This is the time of 1980s, 1970s, 80s and 90s where share certificates used to be given in physical paper form and printed. So this is how it used to look. There were certain 
there is a kind of a certificate or language which is printed in the middle of the certificate so this was generally a proof and then on the uh, this is not a full uh, share certificate and then on the bottom side you used to have the number of quantity of shares which you which you have taken or something so this is kind of a share certificate in physical form so this was actually de delivered to your house when you bought any shares of any companies so security document the share certificates are also called a security document because shares are nothing but kind of financial securities so these are documents or certificates which acts as a proof of ownership of that security example a share certificate which are which are of uh, an example of which i have given you on the left hand side that is reliance industries limited share certificate so these are similar to property documents uh, as you have what is the proof that you own a flat or own a house the title deeds right so similarly the uh, in earlier times or in right now also the proof that you own a share of a company is nothing but the security document or the share certificate now the only difference is in earlier times they were in physical paper form but post 1996 they have been converted to digital form so you need to store these documents securely if they were in physical form they you you needed to store it in your cupboard or something or in a locker but pre 1996 they uh, they were in paper format hence they were also known as delivery because they were delivered to your address however post 1996 digitization of share certificates was done uh, it was pioneered by nsc in 1996 followed by bsc in 1999 so now because they were digitized or they were converted into uh, dematerialized or they were converted into electronic form so now you needed a place to store them right because when they were in physical uh, shares format you, you you could have stored it in a file or in your locker now you need to store uh, the these shares digitally in a digital vault same like uh, banks where you used to have paper money uh, we used to store it in a locker now you have digital money which is stored in your electronic bank accounts so the process of converting so the process of converting digital shares to so process of converting physical shares to digital shares is called as dematerialization which i'll be telling you so this is a kind of same thing uh, like uh, physical share certificate however this is now in digital format same thing the same format is being followed as it was followed for previous uh, pre digitization share certificates but just that it is now in a soft copy format which is stored in digital vaults now where are these digital vaults and how are the digital vaults classified as accounts we'll just see so now what is dmat let us see what is the word dmat on the left hand side is a statement of a, of of someone's dmat account this person holds gold etf quantity 4 nhpc shares quantity 370 reliance power 144 and suzlon energy 204 shares so this is just a statement of his dmat account this is kind of a portfolio page also which you will see if people are already holding uh, already have a trading account you will be able to see it in your portfolio page now let us come to the word dmat or dematerialization the process of converting or the process of digitization of securities documents is called as dematerialization which is also abbreviated as dmat dmat is an abbreviation of the word dematerialization means your physical shares are now converted to digital soft copies so what is a dmat account now same i think the word only the term only explains it self explanatory the storage place for digital share certificates is called as dmat account this dmat account is linked to our pan numbers that is permanent account numbers or aadhar it is a digital vault of our shares the word digital vault is coming in again again and i also just want to reiterate that there are three accounts that is bank savings account trading account and your dmat account which are interlinked to each other how does a fund transfer takes place fund transfer takes place from bank account to trading account and vice versa while the security trans uh, transfer takes place from one dmat account to other dmat from buyer's dmat account to seller's dmat account dmat account do not come into your trading account on the trading account page only a statement this this page only a statement of your dmat account is seen dmat account shares shares never come into your trading account okay now what is a depository see i have gone in a sequence uh, format i have first showed you the securities 
physical securities then digital shares how they were converted to digital shares what is dematerialization what is a demat account then obviously when demat accounts exist now you need an organization to maintain these right so here comes the role of depositories so depositories are nothing but a financial intermediary which offers the services of maintaining a demat account these are the organizations which run demat account okay now there are two main depositories in india in fact the only two depositories in india both are of same structure and come under strict sebi regulations so these are as you have guessed it on the left hand side you you can see on the left hand side these are national security depository limited nsdl which is which is a subsidiary of nsc and cdsl central depository services limited which is a subsidiary of bsc okay now generally these are the only two depositories in india now please don't get confused that if you have an account in nsdl you cannot transact in bsc shares it is not like that if you have an account in any of these two organizations you can hold shares and commodities of any exchange of india just rest assured now what is the role of a dp you have a depository right so can you like you you go to a bank account for example if you want to open if you have to open a if you desire to open a icic bank account you just call them up right call the call their customer care or you just turn up at their branch however you cannot do it with a depository you require because there are only two depositors in india and uh, they cannot take that much crowd or they cannot take that, that much direct customer interaction so they want to avoid it so they have a, have an intermediary in between between you and the depository which is known as a depository participant because direct interaction with nsdl and cds is provided hence this, there is a role of dps in between let us see in the next slide what is this role now what is a depository participant on the left hand side you can see a depository participant in between this is a guy or an organization which acts as an intermediary between the depository that is nsdl and cdsl and you or the investor okay now definition a dp is a financial intermediary it is a link or an agent between market participants that is you you are one of the market participants one kind of market participants and the depository there are only two depositors in india nsdl and cdsl now examples of depository participants most banks and some stock brokers were generally depository participants not all stock brokers are depository participant so mind you when you go and open a trading account with any one of the stock brokers he may or may not be a dp so earlier i would just like to give you an example around till 2011 or 12 or 13 zeroda used to have a dp separately means it 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 was not a uh, depository participant so it it uh, it uh, enlisted the services of iifl how it basically outsourced the opening of demat accounts to iifl and Trade, the linking of trading account was done at its end only so when you when you approached zeroda pre 2014 what it used to do was it used to open a cdsl account through iifl for you the documentation was done at zeroda only but it was actually not done at its end it was done at iifl end so I, iifl was a dp and the trading account was provided by zeroda and bank account obviously was provided by your bank uh, your banker so you used to have a banker Zeroda used to give you a trading account, and IIFL used to give you a, a CDSL demat account, which on all three used to be linked. But nowadays, what is happening is Zeroda itself is a DP. So the demat account and your trading account are both opened by Zeroda only, both linked with your savings bank account that is on your PAN number. I hope I have explained it to you in simple language. So now, what is the role of DP? As I already told you, IIFL and Zeroda both are DPs now. So they facilitate opening of demat account. They act as a liaison between you and the depository. Okay, liaison. See, he is kind of a liaisoning agency. Now there are multiple bank accounts of yours. Okay, they can be linked to your demat and trading accounts because most of them, all your bank accounts are linked to your PAN numbers only. Uh, till the time all your bank account linked to a, are linked to a single pan number they can be linked to your demat and trading accounts yeah so basically depository participant is nothing but a, a, a reiteration it's nothing but a link between depositories and depositories and market participants depository participant is a link yes 
So now let us see the role of stock broker and or, or the difference between a stock broker and DP has certain similarities nowadays because their roles are getting overlapped now. I gave you the example of Zeroda. So the differences were stock broker is a link between market participant that is you and the exchanges while depository participant is a link between the market participant that is you and the depository. Okay, exchange is different and depository is different. So Zerada, Sherka, and Angel Broking, etc. were earlier simple stock brokers and they were not depository participants. However, what is happening now is in earlier times, ILNFS, most banks and some brokers were depository participants. But now their role is getting overlapped. Zerada is a stock broker also and a depository participants also. Sher Khan is a stock broker and a DP both and I don't know much about angel broking so I cannot comment in this video. Now what is the role of stock broker to facilitate transactions at exchanges and the role of DP is to facilitate opening of DMAT accounts with the depository. Now what are the similarities stock broker and DP what are the similarities both are now financial intermediaries financial inter, it is self explanatory and some entities do dual roles and overlap Zeroda and Sher Khan are now doing the dual roles of a stock broker and a DP they facilitate transactions at exchanges and facilitate opening of demat accounts both now there are some brokers who are doing the dual role now let us see the old system which was followed where DPs were different and stock brokers were different so this is you you are here you are the market participant so now if you wanted to open a dmat account follow the, follow this arrow okay so you used to for opening a dmat account you used to approach a depository participant like ilnfs who used to open a dmat account in one of the depository that is nsdl or cdsl however if you have if you wanted to buy or sell any shares so you had to approach a broker through his trading account or the trading terminal and then the stock broker used to interact with exchange to buy or sell your whatever shares you wanted to buy or sell okay this was the old system which was being followed now let us see the new system in the new system now these two roles have are overlapping the depository participants and the stock brokers are now overlapping with each other so stock bro the market participant that is yourself will now directly interact with the stock broker only who may be the depository participant for example Zeroda and Sher Khan they both are depository participants and stock brokers both so now market participant has to interact with one person only one entity only that is the stock broker which is overlapped as a depository participant who now facilitates into opening of accounts with DM, uh, opening of DMAT account with the depository and also facilitates in the transaction of buying and selling of shares and other securities so I think I hope to got the new system. In the new system, there was not overlap. There was not much overlap between these two entities. Okay. So with this, we come to the end of part four. This chapter is quite interesting, quite uh, information heavy. However, I would like you please. Uh, you may not understand it in one go. You may have to. You may have to see this video again and again and you may, may have to rewind it again and again at different board. I In the description I have given you the links of different parts. You can jump to the various parts and listen to them again and again. If any questions please put it in the comment section or you can also approach our WhatsApp group or Telegram group. So what are the key takeaways? Let us say we have come to the end of the chapter now. What are the key takeaways or revision of this chapter? In part 1, we saw financial intermediaries. The market's ecosystem is built by a cluster of financial intermediaries which offer unique services as per their role. Financial intermediaries are nothing but middlemen among diverse market participants. They also facilitate financial transactions. Now there are three main intermediaries in the financial ecosystem. They are the banks, the brokers and the depositories. Now what does the what does each of these do? They give you a bank account, banks give you a bank account, brokers give you a trading account, and depositories give you a DMAT account. Please follow the color coding. Okay. Now just to reiterate, I have given you uh, again uh, put a copy this slide. The bank account is maintained by the bank, the trading account is maintained by the brokers, the DMAT account is maintained by the depositories, and the role is defined. And these all these three accounts are interlinked with each other 
so the three financial intermediate intermediaries operate via the three different accounts these are the trading dmat and the bank account the trading the dmat and the bank account okay all are digital and all are interlinked and giving you a very seamless experience in your financial securities transaction experience let us come to part 2 that is banks and clearing corporations banks have a straightforward role they are the lender borrower and maintain your savings bank account they facilitate in fund transfer from your saving accounts to trading account and vice versa and they offer intermediation fund transfer financial and advisory services also there are two types of banks commercial and merchant banks now what is a clearing corporation clearing corporation is nothing but guarantees a smooth efficient settlement of transactions they credit and debit securities and funds they ensure that the, if you have bought a share it comes into your demat account if you have sold a share the funds are transferred from your trading account they ensure that they solve disputes and prohibit defaults if there is any defaults or disputes in between clearing corporation solves it and nsccl and iccl are the two main intermediaries or sorry clearing corporations now there are five additional clearing corporations but they are not applicable to us unless and until you are uh, transacting in those exchanges nscl is a subsidiary of nse iccl is a subsidiary of bac and both have interoperability i have already given a slide on this in part 3 we will see the, what are the brokers or financial brokers they are the intermediary which holds stock broking license they facilitate transactions by maintaining trading account and providing trading terminals you choose a broker as per your requirement I already showed you a slide on what kind of four five requirements to you choose your broker and they act as a gateway to exchange through their trading terminal account which is nothing but a software on website and mobile applications and they provide certain services and they also charge a fees which is called as a brokerage now there are three ways to interact you can either use a website mobile applications or phone call in earlier times there were other uh, in pre digital area the three uh, ways to interact were directly go to the broker's office then in telephone era you used to call them and nowadays you interact with these three ways that is website mobile application and phone call is getting phased out however on certain times when you are in out of network you can also do phone trading nowadays it was earlier also but nowadays people use phone call only when they are out of network or out of internet services so part 4 depositories and depository participants in 1996 the securities which were in physical paper format were converted to digital format which is also called as dematerialization so depositories are nothing but now you require some place to hold this digital format securities so here comes the role of depositories they maintain dmat accounts which is a digital vault of financial securities which are in digital format so nsdl and cdsl are the only two main depositories in india and they follow interoperability you can't interact with dps uh, you can't interact with depositories directly hence is the role of dps now what are dps they are intermediate intermediaries between depository and you that is the market participant the role of dps and brokers now overlaps in the new system i showed you the differences and the similarities and dps facilitate opening of dmat accounts and multiple bank accounts or one pan can be linked to your dmat account yep now just want to give you a brief overview how a transaction takes place on the buy side and on the sell side so when you want to buy infosys share and let us see an example of selling infosys share so for buying you open a trade your trading account look for the prices of infosys and then buy it you do the opposite in selling of infosys shares now what happens is the shares of infosys will be credited to your dmat account and the funds will get debited while the shares in in the selling the shares in your dmat account will get out or debited from your dmat account and the funds from the buyer will get credited to your trading account yep so securities transfer the seller demat account means the shares go from seller demat account to buyer demat account and funds transfer 
the funds go from buyer trading account to the seller's trading account funds are in trading account while shares are in demat accounts only please do not get confused in this uh, i'll be explaining to you this process in uh, chapter 6 uh, of the basics so i hope uh, if there are any questions you can ask in the comment section or you can approach the whatsapp group so with this we come to the conclusion there are certain financial intermediaries in the markets financial intermediaries are entities the three entities are regulators market participants and intermediaries now in intermediaries there are three types of intermediaries banks brokers and depositories and depository participants to some extent so banks and clearing corporations have a straight forward role banks give you savings bank account clearing corporations clear out your transaction uh, brokers give you a trading account and depositories give you a demat account all these three accounts are interlinked with each other to give you a seamless experience of transacting in financial markets so with this we come to the end of this chapter guys you may have to revisit this video or this chapter again and again so please feel free and uh, you will not be able to understand this in one go i would just like to say repetition is the mother of all learning keep uh, seeing this video again and again and finally the gaps in your information will be filled slowly and steadily